RAM is more than just another confusing bit of PC jargon. It's essential to the basic functioning of your computer. But what is RAM? What do the different types mean? And how much do you actually need for your PC? I'm Megan Ellis from MakeUseOf.com and here's a quick and dirty guide to understanding RAM. So what is RAM? RAM stands for Random Access Memory, and it's the short-term memory your computer uses to keep track of the programs and data you're accessing on your PC. It's basically the middle ground between the small, super-fast cache in your CPU and the large but slow storage of your hard drive. Unlike your hard drive, RAM is not permanent storage. Rather, RAM allows temporary storage of data relevant to the processes you're actively and currently using on your device. This allows your device to access the OS components and processes it needs right now, quickly and easily. The more programs you're running simultaneously, the more space is taken up on your RAM cards. If you're running so many processes that your RAM storage runs out, your computer begins using your hard drive. Since it has a much slower read-write speed than RAM, performance will slow down significantly. This is the reason that trying to have too many intensive programs open at the same time having dozens of Google Chrome tabs open results in your computer slowing down. The contents of your system RAM are lost as soon as you turn the power off. Losing power is like wiping your desk clean of every document. This is one of the ingredients to success when it comes to the tried and true method of turning your PC on and off again when it's running slow or producing errors. Turning your PC off flushes data on your RAM, giving you a clean start when you reboot. When people talk about RAM, they're usually talking about Synchronous Dynamic RAM, or SD-RAM. This is the RAM type that most people are familiar with, the sticks that you slot into your motherboard. This isn't the same as SRAM, which stands for Static RAM. Static RAM is the memory used for CPU caches, among other things. It's highly unlikely that you will encounter SRAM in general usage, so it's not something you should worry about. So now that you know the basics of RAM, let's discuss its different form factors. For the most part, RAM comes in two sizes, dual inline memory modules, or DIMMs, which are found in desktops and servers, and SODIMMs, small outline DIMMs, found in laptops and other smaller devices. The two RAM form factors use the same technology and functionally work in exactly the same way, but SODIMM sticks are significantly smaller. When you are buying RAM, the first thing to figure out is the form factor that you need. RAM is useless if it doesn't fit into your motherboard. Now let's get on to RAM generations. When you're shopping for RAM, you'll notice that they're classified according to whether they're DDR2, DDR3, DDR4, and so on. These labels refer to the generation of the RAM. DDR stands for double data rate, which refers to the ability of DDR RAM to complete two transfers per clock cycle. This is the technology that modern RAM sticks are based on. Whenever this technology is significantly improved upon in terms of performance and speed, this marks a new generation. RAM within a specific generation shares certain characteristics, such as its baseline performance and number of pins. The number following DDR lets you know which generation your RAM belongs to. DDR2, RAM from the second generation, is the oldest kind of RAM you're likely to come across today. You can still buy it in limited quantities to upgrade older machines. Otherwise, DDR2 is obsolete. DDR3 was released in 2007. DDR4 hit the market in 2014, yet it still hasn't taken complete control of the RAM market. DDR5 is the newest RAM generation as of the making of this video. But since it takes some time for a new RAM generation to spread throughout the market, it won't become the main RAM standard for new computers for a few more years. So why does RAM generation matter? Firstly, there's performance. Later generations perform better than older ones. However, the other reason is motherboard compatibility. While all RAM generations are exactly the same physical size and shape, they aren't compatible with all motherboards. You can't use DDR3 RAM in a motherboard that only supports DDR2. Likewise, DDR3 doesn't fit in a DDR4 slot. To stop any confusion, each RAM generation has a notch cut into the pins at different locations. This means you cannot accidentally mix your RAM modules up or damage your motherboard, even if you buy the wrong type. Of course, when it comes to buying new hardware, the generation of RAM is a partial indication of its performance. Later generations are a significant improvement on the ones before. There are a few other factors besides the generation of RAM that affect this performance. 
we'll deal with this and other RAM jargon terms related to capacity, speed, latency, and more. A RAM's capacity refers to how much data the module can handle. Nowadays, this is measured in gigabytes, with the most common DIMM sticks having 4 gigabytes, 8 gigabytes, or 16 gigabytes of RAM. Then there's the RAM module's speed. When you look at RAM descriptions, you may have seen RAM referred to by two sets of numbers, like DDR3-1600 and PC3-12800. These both refer to different aspects of the RAM speed. In a descriptor like DDR3-1600, the 1600 refers to the transfer speed or clock speed of the RAM, measured in megatransfers per second. Essentially, it's a measurement of a RAM module's processing speed, basically how many clock cycles or transfers it can complete per second. So DDR3-1600 RAM operates at 1600 megatransfers per second. So what's the PC label for? This gives the PC or pipeline clock rating for RAM and it refers to the bandwidth of the RAM, measured in megabytes per second. It's how much data can be sent between the memory and the CPU per second. So PC3 refers to the third RAM generation, just like DDR3. But the last number in a PC rating refers to bandwidth of the RAM in megabytes per second. So PC3-12800 RAM has a bandwidth of 12,800 megabytes per second. Another set of numbers you'll sometimes see on RAM modules are the RAM's timings. They appear in a string of numbers separated by dashes. For example, 9-10-9-27. A RAM timing is a measurement of how quickly the RAM responds to requests, measured in nanoseconds. The lower the number, the quicker the RAM reacts to requests. But how much should you worry about clock speed and latency? For most people, Capacity trumps clock speed and latency every time. You will get more benefit from 16 gigs of DDR4-1600 RAM than you would get from 8 gigabytes of DDR4-2400 RAM. In most cases, timing and latency are the last points of consideration. Our final piece of jargon is ECC, which stands for Error Correcting Code. ECC RAM is a special kind of memory module that aims to detect and correct data corruption. Consumer motherboards and processors don't usually support ECC compatible RAM. So now that we've dealt with the jargon and the various things you need to know about RAM, let's answer the final question. How much RAM do you need? The amount of RAM you need depends on what you plan to use your device for. However, it's important to note that RAM is not the only factor at play when it comes to your computer handling multiple applications at once. If you use a computer for simple tasks such as typing up documents, sending emails, and watching the occasional video, you can easily get by with 4 gigs of RAM. But when it comes to intensive games and memory hungry programs such as video editing or graphic design software, you'll start looking at 16 gigs to 32 gigs of RAM. Again, the exact amount depends on the generation of RAM. However, other hardware upgrades might be required. After all, 32 gigs of RAM isn't going to make a new AAA title run well if your graphics card or CPU aren't up to the task. Now you know the difference between RAM generations, you can tell a DIMM from a SO DIMM, and you know how to spot RAM with faster transfer rates and higher bandwidth. At this point, you're essentially a RAM expert. If you have the correct form factor and the corresponding RAM generation, you can't go wrong. Timing and latency do play a role, but capacity is king. And that ends off our quick and dirty guide to understanding RAM. Got other tech questions and scenarios you need explained? Subscribe to the channel for more videos like these, as well as reviews, giveaways, and tutorials.